So we are beginning this abbreviated edition of the Sports Max Zone with cricket veteran Kimar Roach is hoping that the West Indies bowlers can reproduce the quality they showed in the first test when the Caribbean men take on Australia. In the second test, uh, day-night affair at the Gabba in Brisbane, the match is set to start at 12 midnight Eastern Caribbean time, 11 in Jamaica, and it will be live on Sportsmax. The Windies, who lost the first test by 10 wickets, have taken positives from the fast bowling performance, and Roach, who is the most senior of that unit, spoke on how impressed he was sharing the ball with two Josephs, Shamar and Azari. Guys, upcoming, obviously Azari. Um, probably seen a player now. Um, he's been playing for we just matches West Indies now, so he's communicating much better. Um, he's learning a lot more, um, and he's been doing well for West Indies in all three formats. So uh, the young Joseph now Shamara coming in, obviously his first Test series away. Obviously against a tough Australian side. I think he handled himself pretty well, um, as you can see. And he's a very confident young man, and I'm looking forward to both of him. Um, he shares a lot of information with me, and we have a lot of conversations and. He has a good energy that I love, so I'm happy to be around him, obviously to, to be a part of his career, obviously the starting of it, and let's see how, how long, how good he can be uh, at the end of it. So he's destined to be good, and I'm, I'm, I hope he just puts the work in and puts some good performances for West Indies. Okay, so joining us to preview the second test match in uh, Brisbane, Fazir Mohamed. Uh, Faz, uh, your prediction for the opening test in Adelaide was a loss for the West Indies inside three days. This second test is a day-night fixture. The Australians have never lost a, a day-night match. And uh, somehow the, um, the, the, the odds are stuck heavily against the West Indies again. What's your, your first um, thought on, on, on the job the West Indies has to do here to avoid defeat? Well, I suspect it's going to be even tougher this time around. The best uh, prospect of avoiding defeat is maybe three days of rain. Uh, which is unlikely to happen uh, at, at the GABA. Because l l let's face it, again, we're talking about a hugely experienced and successful and professional team playing at a venue where they hardly ever lose. The lost to India a couple of seasons ago well, was a significant one. Of course, the West Indies in the Caribbean team's pump in the 70s and 80s would start series by winning at Brisbane. There's the famous tie test at Brisbane as well. Uh, but uh, again, generally, when you talk about playing at the Gaba, a seamless track, even more so a day-night fixture, pink ball, moving around, exaggerated movement uh, in those conditions, and the experience of the Australian bowlers, even if the West Indies play to their very best with the resources that they have available to them, I can't see them getting the better of Australia. Yep, yeah, and uh, previews suggesting today that Kevin Sinclair could take good of Kish Moti's spot in, in the 11 in one one change. Is is that something you welcome? I have no problem with that. In fact, I thought that maybe both spinners might have played in the test match in Adelaide. But again, it was such an abbreviated encounter. There was little opportunity for the slow bowlers uh, to have a say. And this is also one of the challenges. I'm uh, not saying that Gudakish Moti must be the first choice. But if you're going to really establish someone as your, your frontline spinner, it, it makes it difficult when you're in and in your, on your own. But I thought that Sinclair would have played in the first test match alongside Moti. It didn't happen, but now he has his chance. So again, it reinforces how useless these two test series are because if he has a good game now, Sinclair or any other bowler for that matter or any other batter for the West Indies, to say, well, now they can move on to the next series with confidence, that's not until July. When, when so much could happen along the way. But, yeah, I, I hope the young man takes his opportunity. We've seen him in, in the white ball format in West Indies colours already. He's really confident, ebullient, that celebration, the, the flip when he takes the wickets and so on. Let's see, hope that we see a couple of, of those celebrations during the course of the Test match. Yeah, Faz, one Sports Max Zone presenter who will remain nameless, he told me <laughs> earlier today that with this match starting at 11 o'clock, um, there is less likelihood that he'll watch much of the cricket compared to last week's um, evening starts in, in, in Brisbane. Um, how much sleep will you be losing tonight? Well, let's just do the, the process of elimination. One sports <laughs> match presenter he. who shall be nameless, he said, so it can't be you, it can't be Mariah, so let's guess. Is, 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 is it a current or a former presenter, Lance? Current. Oh, it is? <laughs> yes. 
Oh, I wonder who that <laughs> could be. <laughs> we didn't even need that. to know that. Let's leave that alone for the moment and let, let, let people try to work out who we're talking about. But, but yeah, I, I can understand that because it, it, it really leaves you fearful of what could happen to the West Indies. You can only hope that the players take on the challenge as positively as they can, even though, again, everything points to them being outgunned in every way by this very strong Australian team in conditions to which they are ideally suited. But again, having recognized that in every likelihood, it's going to be another steamrolling victory by Australia. I think you want to see these players do well as far as whatever opportunities come their way. Try to build an innings, take the chances that come your way in the field, not be set up over and over again by the opposition as we saw with Joshua De Silva. So it's so very important for their personal development for, apart from, of course, being part of the West Indies, for, for them to have some sort of performance that offers a measure of encouragement moving deeper into 2024. Yeah, you speak about, you know, forms of encouragement and, of course, just taking the opportunity that comes to hand fast. One such player was Kirk McKenzie. He got that start, you know, he was doing well, but, of course, he lost his wicket. And I would say, for me, some of the manner in which these players um, give away their wickets, and I'm using the word giveaway, I feel as if it's so irresponsible. I'm hoping that, you know, Kirk McKenzie, one of those players, can continue from that first test. Your thoughts? I hear your point on, on re re referencing it as irresponsible. But, but again, I, I, I reference the fact that, one, we're talking about players with very little experience, if any at all, at this level of the game. And two, performances at our regional first-class level, uh, where the standard is low, their numbers aren't outstanding. So, so essentially, it's sort of like the under-19s, where you see them almost wanting to play a shot a ball, even though they won today, uh, which is good. But, but, but again, the way they played the last match, losing with 10 overs to spare, it seems that for many of them, and we're talking now back to the, the test squad, that it's not automatic for them to do what is required when we talk about test match batsmanship. And, and again, the flip side is, if you want to occupy the crease for a long time, as the likes of Craig Brathwaite or Tejanar and Chandipal are wont to do, it's not going to succeed in a place like Australia if you're entirely strokeless, as we saw happening on the first morning of the first test, because sooner or later, the bowlers are going to get you. So, so that is where the challenge comes in. For, for the stodgy ones to be a bit more positive without risking their wickets, and for those with hardly any experience to learn somehow what is required to bat for long periods in the toughest circumstances possible. Yeah, and I'm hoping, Faz, as you mentioned, that, that of course, the players that have more experience, because you're right when you say these players have not played enough cricket to be going up, you know, fighting against an opponent like Australia. I'm hoping that the Craig Brathwaite's, the ones with the experience, can actually occupy the crease. Tej Narayan Chandrapal really announced himself and, you know, yet to see him put on another big score. Um, I'm hoping he could at least get a start against Australia. Yes, and it's so important that getting that start, but getting runs as well. Yeah. As we saw in that first test, they batted for over half an hour. But from the moment they went, the wicket started to tumble. And then we saw a bit of resistance, Mackenzie leading the way with that half century. So it's, it's not like taking on Zimbabwe in those slow, low pitches. And as we saw from Chandapol, getting a double hundred. We want to see more like Brathwaite of... 13, 14 months ago, where he got that 100 in Perth, where we saw successive big partnerships with himself and the Chandapol. At least that is going to give the younger players to come who might be really very nervous about this sort of challenge, day-night conditions as well, to, to get a measure of confidence, to see the, the top two provide the sort of resistance that is necessary. But no question about it, it is going to be extremely difficult. Yeah, Faz, you know, despite the daunting task facing this West Indies team in Australia, as cricket fans, as regional cricket fans, we dig for positives. And one positive I'll suggest that I've seen on this tour, um, and I'm really digging here, is that there has been a certain unity um, that I've recognized with this unit in Australia, a type of unity that I think is quite commendable, the way they played the cricket in the first test, the way they rallied around each other, 
And I feel that sometimes if you have that more often with better quality, um, there can be more success. But I just felt that was really good to see in the first test. Well, let me contradict you right away. Sure. I would rather have uh, a bunch of players cussing one another every Monday morning and wanting to fight in the dressing room, as happened in the time of the 80s and 90s when the West Indies were winning and win on the field, rather than a happy, together, unified bunch of, of players who are losing and losing by a mile and a half. I'm not dis detracting from what you're saying about them being together and unified, but let me just draw an example for you. Mm -hmm. When the West Indies lost the test match at Headingley inside two days mm -hmm. in the year 2000 on the way to surrendering the Wisden Trophy, when they turned up for training next, you couldn't have seen a happier bunch of guys. They were, they were all happy. They were all together. So I think that is sort of like a, a false image, a misleading image, because West Indians generally, West Indies players generally get along quite well together, as I said. I'd rather they not speak to each other, but win on the field. Yeah, well, I don't think you're going to see that type of quality anytime soon, Faz. So I would suggest to you that the unity is required to help the team move forward because the quality certainly isn't there and certainly isn't there to take on the likes of an Australia. Um, a quick one, Faz. Kimar Roach, um, I listened to him speak about the fast bowlers in the unit and about his role and the players coming to him and speaking with him. I've been rather impressed with uh, Kimar Roach and I wonder if you think he is the type of uh, player who could transition seamlessly into a coaching role in the West Indies setup. I wouldn't be surprised if the next West Indies assignment, uh, Kimar Roach is included in the squad as bowling coach. Uh, because essentially you, he's been there long enough. We, we're talking from 2009 to the present time. If you're talking test match cricket, that's 14 years and he's seen it all. And again, he's even done a couple of stints as a television commentator, which tells you that he's a decent communicator. He is someone who quite clearly sees that role as a mentor, as a senior player, as someone who can impart that knowledge. And I think this could very well be the perfect transition time because you've got young fast bowlers, you've got Jaden Seals still battling injury, you've got a King Jordan, who many have suggested might be able to come in to the final 11 tonight, we'll have to wait and see. But, but again, I think Kimar Roach, who is a sensible individual from all my discussions with him that I would have had previously, would recognize that he's coming to the end of his career. And indeed, maybe that transition to some role with the West Indies team, whichever format, is almost inevitable. Yeah, fans, over in South Africa today, the young West Indies secured their first victory of the Under-19 World Cup as uh, they defeated Scotland in that fixture. It was their second match of, uh, the, of, the, of the series, and uh, they were up against a Scottish team that had lost to the, the English team in their earlier game. And uh, the West Indies had won the toss. They elected to field and limited Scotland to 205 for nine of their 50 overs. Isaiah Thorne, the pick of the bowlers, the Guyanese pacer with four for 46. And then after a shaky start in the run chase, man of the match, Jewel Andrew, continued his impressive start to the competition, stroking an impressive 64 not out to lead the Windies to victory. Faz, you referenced the um, sort of um, happy-go-lucky nature of the West Indies young batsmen in South Africa earlier on when you were talking about this uh, while previewing the test match. Um, some evidence of that again today, but as you, as you just mentioned, they ended up winning, which wasn't the case when they faced the host last week. Correct. And maybe against a, a higher quality team uh, like England, who they are playing in two days' time, which is going to be critical, obviously, because England have played 2-1-2. South Africa will know what they, they need to do in their final game coming up against Scotland the day after. So really, the top order has to click. You, you can't have a situation where you're relying on your number six to, to pull you out of the fire every time. Like, okay, granted, it happened in the first match. And, and again, because of that excessive, excessive aggression, West Indies lost the match with 10 overs to spare. This time around, they were able to pull it off. And all credit uh, to, to, to Joel Andrew for, for the way he's played. Should he be coming higher up the order? Because the top order looks very vulnerable. And I think England have that mix of pace and spin, some wrist spin as well, that are going to present some challenges. But yes, a win is a win. It's good to get that victory, good to get that bit of confidence from the game. But surely they need to look 
at the stability of that top order going into that game against England. Yeah, I want to suggest as well, though, Faz, that while it was infuriating to see the West Indies batsmen giving their wickets away this morning, it, it struck me that it was the result of overconfidence and, and feeling comfortable at the crease, unlike the West Indies seniors who are taking on the Australians who are struggling to, to cope with the quality of the bowling. And uh, I, I just wonder if there isn't just a thin line between um, confidence and overconfidence, because the, the top order batsmen haven't done anything yet in the under-19 tournament, but they are solid batsmen as far as quality is concerned. I don't think they are inferior to Joel Andrew, who is the one who has stood up and, and batted so far. But I take the point that they have to be more responsible if they're going to take on and beat England in their next game, which they have to. Absolutely. And, and you're right. There is that fine line because you could run down the track and hoist someone over long off and you're praised and it's described as a really audacious shot. You run down the track the next morning, you miss it by a mile and a half and you're stumped and you, you, you're ridiculed and you're pilloried. That, that, that's the way it goes. But again, the numbers don't lie. They may not tell you the entire story, but they don't lie. And therefore, if these players are as confident as they appear, then get the runs. Yes. Get the run that, that re reflect that confidence. Don't get 20 or 11 or 17 or 27 and then, then, then get out. Take the match to its logical conclusion of a West Indies victory and you're maybe 87 not out or 120 not out. And then we can say, OK, you have that sensible head on the shoulders to match that supreme confidence. OK, Faz, we're going to leave it there. And um, uh, we're counting down the hours to your midnight start of the test match in Brisbane. Weston is taking on the Aussies in this day-night fixture. And I'm sure we'll talk about that tomorrow and uh, the day after as well. Thanks, Faz. Take care. Yeah, back with more on the Sportsmatch Zone after this.